outlet as going well. On. Today we are going to be looking at this machine here. It is the uh, La Spaz or La Spaziel. Uh, it's the two group AV espresso machine. It's commercial. Um, and yeah, we're just going to kind of go over the features of it, um, kind of how I plumbed it in and uh, Barrett's going to be asking me some questions and I'm going to answer yeah. them for all of you guys out there. So let me go ahead and get all this turned around. We got it all plumbed up. I sure do. So you got a flow jet or you got it like direct connected? You're running a water softener or anything like that? So no water softener yet. However, <laughs> I will go over everything that I have. So the way that I set it up was I did a water pump that is connected to a five gallon bucket. So this is not regular fresh water. It was actually all used up. So what I did was I just mixed um, a packet per gallon of third water uh, and each five gallon jug. And then I just dumped it all into here. So it is espresso uh profiled water for the espresso machine cool. and what that does is it feeds into this pump which comes crossed over into the accumulator and then it comes into the quick connection over here for the espresso machine and then the drain comes actually from underneath the machine and it drains into a empty five gallon bucket okay. um i have a converter so i have a 20 amp plug into a 15 amp plug going into the extension cord. Um, I don't recommend doing that unless you have a 20 amp breaker behind there. Yeah. Um, but it is a 20 amp breaker. Um, and then one thing that I am going to fix uh, when I get done, I ordered it, but it's going to be a cutoff valve that's over here. So that way it's a true disconnect. Cause right now the only way that I can truly disconnect that is if I run all the water and it drains through the accumulator first. So what's the difference so, between the pump and the accumulator? So the pump will pump water from the five gallon jug and the accumulator has kind of like a blow up bladder inside of it. And what that does is it regulates the pressure. So okay. when it comes, cause the pump will have sporadic pressures that go through and that's not good for the stability of an espresso machine or the life of an espresso machine. So when you put an accumulator to it, then it actually accumulates the amount of water that it needs or takes for the espresso machine to stay up on pressure. Otherwise you'd see this fluctuate Fluctual. and that would be bad. Yeah. Very cool. So, so go you ahead. Can pull on some shots. Absolutely. Pre-group, it looks like. Yep, so it's a two-group espresso machine, and uh, it is a – so most people, when they think of commercial, they think of 58 millimeter. This is a 53 millimeter. Um, however, uh, I do have a Breville Barista Express, and it's a 54 millimeter, and this fits perfectly fine uh, when tamping. Obviously, you'd want probably a 53.5 or something like that, yeah. but this does the job until I get one in. <laughs> Um, and then cup warmer, cup warmer is super hot. So I've had these cups on the cup warmer for probably 15 to 20 minutes after the machine was already like super hot. Yeah. And I'm talking, I stacked these on purpose. So I did it like this and like this for two reasons. First, this cup that's just solely on the actual tray is so hot that like, it's hard to hold this right now. That's, That's how hot this thing gets. Like, very, very hot. So I wanted to see is if I stacked it, <clears throat> does this one still get super hot? And yeah, it does. Not so as hot, hot as these two, but it gets pretty hot. Looks like um, a pretty nice large tray where if you did two layers of cups on the top, I mean, you could probably fit. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. Plus cups. Yeah, let's say two, four, six. 12, 18, 24, 36, probably like 36 to 40 cups. That's a lot of cups. And you think if you're at an event. Nuova Musica, I mean, I couldn't fit that many cups. I could maybe fit about 8 to 10 of those tops stacked. Yeah, and if you think about it, 
Um, if you were to actually go a step further, a lot of people will actually not buy these for at home use, yeah. but let's say you stack paper cups on, I wouldn't do plastic cups, obviously, but paper cups all along there, you could fit hundreds of paper cups on there and just stack them. Yeah. So, um, super nice. It's got a really nice dis uh, display up here. So <laughs> it's just LCD or LED right through here. So is it volumetric? Yep. So this will actually, it's time auto, uh, auto volumetric. Yeah. Um, it's not by obviously by milliliter grams or anything like that. <clears throat> yeah. But it does do it by time. So the cool thing is, is you can use this button uh, right here, this little red button. Yeah. What are all four of those buttons? So kind of they're pre. Speak. Let me see if I can get a better view. See a little better. Yeah, maybe. All right. One second. Let me zoom in. Let me put you here and zoom in. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So this, th there's two. So this is, this would be a half of, or a, one cup, one cup, two cup, two cup. Okay. So what you can do is you can actually program these. They can be anything you want them to be, but the display yeah. is there so you don't forget what you're, what your marker truly is. Yeah. But, um, so like if I was, if I was doing this and I was, and I'm going to be doing this in my trailer, I'm setting the, these two shots for maybe a single cup. So because it's a dual spout down here, yeah. um, what I would do for these two would be probably set these two up for my 12 ounce hot cups. Okay. And then because the ratio would be different, I would set these up differently for like a 16 let's say you offer a 16 ounce or a 20 ounce i would set those for the correct ratios for that so do you technically have four different shot sizes there yep and you have you have four different here and you would probably <laughs> want to match the exact same over yeah. here on this side because obviously you're going to be on bar busy and you're going to have to do pretty much both of them as you go that gives a lot of options having four different options i'm used to seeing two uh, I'm not sure about like the linea full size if you got three. So that's quite a few. And this actually does come <laughs> with a third porta filter. And okay. we were kind of talking about it. And the reasoning behind it is they're thinking if you're super busy, you yeah. could prep three of them or do two and then prep the third one, pop that in right away to where you yep. can serve extra people. Yep. Um, prep and they're brewing. <laughs> Yeah, that system would work a lot better if you had two people on bar constantly pulling yeah. shots because then one could prep one while the other one was pulling one and the other one was also pulling another shot. Yeah. So. Uh, manual mode in the middle, I'm assuming. Yep. Yep. So you can just press this middle button, which has a red circle. Uh, you, can either, you can just click it and then click it off so that way you don't have to mess with any of your presets. And this could be like your, I use it as my flush. So yeah. between shots, I'll hit it and then hit it again really quick because you don't. It doesn't take much. You just want to kind of flush that dirty water out so it's not in your next shot. Yep. Um, and then power switch is located right here in the middle. Okay. Um, it's got a nice protective plastic, yeah. uh, or not plastic, like a rubbery finish, so that way it doesn't go into or seep into the uh, actual uh, switch itself. Um, there is a bar reader here. Uh, so this is going to be your steam pressure. Okay. So this is going to tell you what exactly your steam pressure is. And on this side of the machine, you're going to see that there is a brew bar pressure. Um, okay. And something to note that's a little bit different than the linea that I have that I use for my trailer right now um, is that this actually sits between... Uh, La Speciale actually recommends that this sits between one and five okay. or no one and four. So they, their pressure always sits a little bit lower. And then when you pull the shot, it goes up to pressure because it does kind of a light pre-infusion. Okay. Um, so the meaning or the, the thought behind that is, is it's going to give a soft pre-infusion to your pup. So it's not going to jet water so fast to where you're not going to get, uh, an uneven extraction. It's going to be a lot more even extraction every time you pull a shot. Yeah. Um, so on the and, drip, drip day didn't come off. It's plumbed. Uh, so yeah, it, it is plumbed. Um, if you do want to clean it, 
Uh, it's super easy just to completely remove uh, it. Okay, so it removes nice. Yep. <clears throat> I wasn't sure about that. I kind of figured, but... What it comes you? off so that way you can go in between here and clean in between the grates. Uh, because obviously being plumbed in, you're still going to have some residue on your tray that you're going to want to clean at the end of the night. Okay. So um, this espresso machine, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like seven or eight grand. Yeah. Um, but for think, sit and think about it for a second. My linea was that I use is pretty much like a six or seven thousand dollar machine. The yeah. price went up on them. And it's a one group, and it's really not for heavy duty commercial use. It's pretty much pop up only if you're only serving, I don't know, maybe 30 to 60 people tops. Yeah. Um, this thing can pump out major volume, yeah. super dependable, and it's seven, eight grand. So, yeah. like, it's, it's a good price. Yeah, two groups. You have two gooseneck steam arms. Um, this just makes more sense. Uh, if you can fit it in the space that you're doing. Now, obviously, if you have a pop-up coffee cart, I don't think that this is the best machine out there. I think the really good one would be the one that's behind you because it has got a small footprint. You can plumb it in. You can get the plumbed-in version. Um, and it's not going to – because when you're in a cart, space is huge. Yeah, it really but is. That's why I was going to text on who this is for. If you'd even consider it for a cart, it's probably pretty heavy. It's probably – Yeah. So this would be – I would say this is for uh, like a small coffee shop or any size trailer okay. is what I would say this would be for. There's also an S9, which comes with the digital display on top. It's a little bit more temperature stability. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. But best bang for your buck for sure is the S8. Uh, it's definitely, I mean, I just got it plumbed and hooked up today. So... Uh, I've been pulling a couple shots. I pulled a couple shots while I was on uh, on video with you earlier. Um, but so far, so good. I really enjoy it. The steam pressure. Uh, let me just get a close-up of the steam. Knobs were on the bottom. Those two knobs are actually dials. And then there's three knobs on the top. Two of them are for steam. And the middle one, I think, is for hot water. Is this a pretty good view right here? Yeah. All right. Watch how strong this thing is. That's a lot of steam. On demand, perfect. So, I mean, you have you have a ton of pressure that this machine puts out. And you're going to steam milk. I mean, I steam milk with you. And what did it froth in six seconds? Yeah, it didn't take very long at all. So super <laughs> quick machine. Um, super easy to plumb in once you have all the right parts. I'm going to make a setup guide. Um, and then, um, I'll make a video on that. So that way, if you are doing this at home, uh, it'll just be a little, little bit easier for you to hook that up. If Show you the didn't hot want, water. what's that? Show the hot water real quick. <clears throat> oh, the hot water spout. Yeah. So that works really good. Oh yeah. So that's just the pump kicking in. Okay. And then the accumulator, and then it kicks right off. So let me uh, – I'll actually pull a shot. So I'll do – today I'll just prep one with the DF-83. Okay. Uh, so you can kind of get – is that good lighting? Yeah, not bad. All right. So I already have 18 grams dialed in. Uh, just bear with me. I don't have the 53 millimeter, so – I'm kind of just going with a 58 collar and just trying to do it as best as I can without spilling everywhere. Looks like a pretty cool little commercial machine. It's NSF rated, so you can use it in a small restaurant. There a small trailer if you had a bigger cart and you want the two group it'd be really cool for that um, it's definitely kind of on the smaller end which i actually really like it reminds me of the size of the the two group la Pavani's. so it's just not this massive really heavy machine i feel like i've not used it but 
I just feel like it's really nice to buy a smaller two group. All right. 110 or 220. It's actually 110 volts. You yeah. can do both. There's two options. Oh, there is two options. Okay. Yep. So he has this set up as 110 on a 20 amp circuit. So you will want that 20 amp circuit on this one. 15 amps is not quite enough for that dual group. There's a lot no. of heating element in there. Yeah, see, see how this is so... <laughs> So I gotta be careful when I dump this. Hey, it works for it works decent for what I have. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and obviously when you're in a commercial setting, you would just direct dose, but I don't have that set up in here right now. Yeah, if you got, I don't know, a grinder, but depending on the grinder, you can direct this into that port of filter. You might need to get one made for 53 millimeter, but seems like 58 is kind of the common one, but I do know that there's a lot of 53s out there in commercial cafes, so. It's just kind of hard because I don't have the right tools, but it still works. Yeah. All right. Kind of. Set you up over here. Probably a good view right here. Yeah, nice view. You can see the cup. But I'll actually probably lift this up a tad bit so that way you can see but. the actual coffee come out. Because I do want to show you how nice and soft the shots pull. Uh, because that soft pre infusion in the beginning is it's definitely going to be a lifesaver for. Um, yeah for the quality of your coffee and you're not jetting a crap ton of so all that steam that came out it's because it built up a lot of pressure so you always want to get rid of that steam because it's not good um when you pull a shot when it hits the puck yeah it'll completely destroy that puck that's how this music is as well it has a nice built-in pre-infusion so that's pretty cool if you had i don't have a bottom list for this but if you did you can see where it's just kind of just out the bottom. And then all of a sudden, you'll hear that pump kick on, and you'll see it all come out. Can you really see that? Fusion, really nice puck when you pull it out. Hopefully you can see that shot pretty well. Super nice looking shot, though. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. Pretty close, maybe a little over, but a little over. I didn't. I I changed the grind size since the last shot, um, but this one probably could have been a little bit finer. But other than that, I mean, it pulls super nice. Um, and you saw it was like it didn't like just jet out like it normally would. It kind of stalled oh, for a second. Cool. So like and, a day. Hey, let's say you're coming in and you're wanting to set up your trailer. Like I know the coffee shops, they'll come in, they'll pull a few shots and dump them. Uh, programming your setting pretty easy. Yeah. So uh, the way that you would program it is, let me just bring this down here. All right. So the way that you would program is super simple. Uh, all you do is you come up. You hold the middle button here, okay, and then it'll take a second, uh, and then you'll start to see that they blink. So see how it's blinking right now? Oh. Um, this cup actually turned off because I already have a preset here. Okay. So it's telling you you can still press this button, but you're going to override whatever was preset. Okay. Um, the ones that are illuminated are the ones that you can use that don't have a preset. They're just factory still. Okay. Um, and then, okay, now what you do is is uh, you have that perfect shot. You know it's exactly what you want. You press that, and it'll automatically start the shot for you. Okay. Um, and then once the shot pulls, you're still going to get this screen. And the way that you save it and get out of it is just press and hold the button again. Okay. And then once all the cups will illuminate and it's solid, 
Correct. It'll then be completely stored, set, and you're good to go for the rest of the day. Um, unless you have to change the grind size, then maybe you have to make a couple adjustments. But super simple to, to correct as you're going through a busy work. Pretty easy. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting. So a lot of people, if you're going to use that function, you'll probably come in. You'll probably dial it. That way you can just really crank out them shots. You're not one to think about it a whole lot. I mean, you could, but if you want, uh, maybe build people helping you out, getting that dialed in is pretty nice. And Look, then I can just show you real quick how simple it is. So the nice thing about commercial machines is the group head gets so hot that I'll put this on here so I'm not dripping coffee everywhere. But it gets so hot that the puck is almost always clean when you dump it. That's nice. So it saves a lot of time. Um, I always just like to click the button with this underneath and then unclick it and then boom. So now it purges and you get to clean your portafilter uh, all in one go. Yep, that's perfect. So uh, <laughs> then you can just wipe the shower screen and then lock it back in. Uh, they are going to be a little bit stiff. Um, this one is over more, but I was trying to get it a little bit worked out. Um, it's not uncommon that this isn't going to be directly at 6 o'clock like it says that it should be or videos that you might see because the group head gasket still uh, very new and it's going to be super tight because it's got to it's got to work itself in. Um, so pretty much like anything, uh, you got to you got to just kind of go with it because for me, just going right here, that's where it wants to stay. But like if I pressure it a little bit more, which you're not going to do in a hurry, it, I can get it to here without putting a lot of effort in. And we still have about here to go. Ew. So don't panic. Nothing's wrong with your machine. It's supposed to be like that. Yeah. Um, just I know that's going to be a lot of questions. And it's a lot of questions we have with a lot of our residential espresso machines. When they get it, they're like, it's not coming to six. It's not coming to six o'clock. It's it's really just stopping at seven o'clock, but it's supposed to be like that. So yeah, you need to break it in for a few weeks. And a lot of times people they put them in when it's cold too. And when it's really cold, it just doesn't have as much flex in it. So I mean this one was kind of the same. It's it's locking in pretty good in center now, but yeah. Usually it's a little bit off. Not a big deal. You could probably get some silicone gaskets eventually for probably 20 bucks. That's pretty cheap to upgrade. All right. So I'm going to read some of the comments here. Yeah. One person said it looks like the mini Aldi. It's very similar to that larger T group. But yeah, very similar. Any other questions? Go through. Let's see. Uh, we covered the voltage. Should scroll down. Um, someone said about the Mini Vivaldi reminds me of the old classic car controls. Yeah, it's kind of got this push button control. So we covered what the knobs on the tray were, their their pressure gauges. Um, all the main controls are at the top. So it's pretty easy to use. It looks pretty intuitive. Um, if you get it set up, you know how to dial it in, uh, you could probably have, I mean, it's a two group, so maybe you're the barista and you have some help. Maybe they're not quite as skilled. I mean, you have the volumetric stuff. So if you have their side perfectly dialed in, they're able to help you out. Um, three different importer filters. Um, the one thing that I noticed, like when I had the, the Espacial Dream T, is the distance between the bottom of the portafilter and the cup was a little bit more limited. Uh, if you're, I, I usually see it more like if you're trying to dial in your shot and you're trying to put a uh, scale under there, there's yeah. a lot of scale, but nine times out of 10, you're not really running a scale for every single shot. Uh, maybe you just test it out every once in a while, but having those spouted portafilters, there's a lot less room. Um, but a lot of people are probably not going to run a bottomless on a commercial rig unless they're just playing around with it. So this yeah. is kind of about. And let's see. So I just want to thank a couple people for joining the live. Uh, Angela, Mr. Rainbow, uh, Robert, 
uh, Anders, and then uh, shout out to uh, Mr. Rainbow for the super sticker. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate the support. Very cool. Did you cut out? He might have cut out. Let's see if he joins back. I don't think I cut out. Well, folks, I don't know. We'll see if he joins back here in another second. Um, if you can hear me, I'm not sure, but thanks for watching. Uh, we just got this machine in probably a week or two ago and have been playing with it. It's been a really neat machine. I haven't had a chance to play with it. We live in different states, but uh, Dylan's obviously getting into the coffee trailer stuff and trying to figure out a nice dual group machine that's not just like insanely expensive. I feel like this is a really nice um, quality machine for the price. And you kind of got to start somewhere and not everyone really wants to go out and spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a really expensive cafe espresso machines so some of these smaller machines i mean they're really cool stuff so thanks for watching if you got any questions if you run a small shop and you're looking for something like this uh, i think we're going to be running some other machines here soon as well i actually have this uh nuova simonelli musica behind me it's really cool i think it's like kind of the perfect machine for a coffee cart so if you're going and doing some smaller events um really cool machine i really like the size it's about the same size as like your linea mini dylan and i did a little size comparison the other day i'll be doing some follow-up videos on it but yet again thanks for watching hit subscribe uh, head over to espresso outlet and uh give us a follow over there thanks